Hey everybody, this is Brian, and this is a follow-up video to the uh, failed Kickstarter project that I had up there. Um, yes, I did say failed. The funding was unsuccessful. I was asking for 5000 which should have uh, sustained the project for a few years, and I only got $330. Um, the reason for that, I believe, is that um, I'm much better at programming than I am at marketing. I virtually told nobody. I'm actually surprised I got 14 backers because I only told two people. Um, and I think I posted it out on YouTube like a month later. But anyways, the goal of this was to make a scalable plug-and-play system um, software that runs as a, as a service in the background. So it's hidden from the end user. And you can dynamically load plugins. So the, uh, the service itself that runs in the background essentially does nothing but run plugins. So in order to make this functional, we have to make plugins. Well... What I'm going to show you now is kind of the uh, the unveiling. The ta-da! This is pre-beta. I would call this alpha, probably version five. I'm right on the verge of going beta with this, and it works. I mean, it works pretty good actually. I've got the uh, the website pretty well fleshed out. Um, this is all using the YE framework. Uh, I think I've got a couple tutorials for YE up there. I need to keep doing those. But um, you know, you can join. There's several account types. Like we're going to support nonprofits, they will cost nothing. Um, small businesses, um, pricing is going to get adjusted drastically. Basically, I want it so that um, I'm not really making a profit off this. I just want to cover the cost of running the websites. Um, uh, let's see, you know, login features, plugins. There's no plugins right now. I've got to develop them still. Um, tutorials. Um, you see this "Show Me How" button on every page. You'll click that, and ta-da! See, not found because I haven't made it yet but every page will have that show me how button you click that and it'll walk you through each page um, known issues contact about um, basically I want to make the site what I call John proof my uncle John is not a computer user at all and if it can be John proof well if even John can do it hey why not all right so when you log in um, you would see that your profile has not been completed you know, you get this little wizard that asks you to complete your profile and things of that nature. And your account hasn't been verified. It'll kick off, you know, standard, you know, you join my site, email, click this link. You can create support tickets. Um, out of the box, it's going to support Windows and Ubuntu Linux. Um, I got to go buy a Mac or become friends with someone who has one because I don't. And I don't have an iPhone. I do have an Android phone. I will be working on that along with my Nexus. Um, so yeah, out of the box, it's going to support Windows and Linux, and because it's written in Qt, it can support all these other devices as well. Um, logins: every account can have multiple logins, um, so you can go in and you know, say you want your brother Bob to be able to access this. So uh, put that into like a business perspective. You know, one person would sign up and they would be paying the bills, so to speak, but you'd have ten little minions under you that would actually go in here and work with the system. Uh, so, you know, you can go and create a login. You can enable and disable things like that. Groups. Think of groups as like folders. So, we'll just give it some blah, blah, blah. It's a folder. And in that folder, you can contain policies, plugins, and devices. So, you can now create groups that align with your business functions. For example, management, sales, IT, help desk, things of that nature. And then you can make policies and define plugins for those. So, for example, let's say you wanted a policy. Uh, we'll call this uh, sales policy. And a policy is nothing more than a trigger and an action. Trigger is something happens, like a specific date. And then you notice how you get these nice, neat little editors in here. Or like a date time, like a specific date and time or like number of days, how many days since the device is last reported back. Uh, an IP mask, so you can say if it goes outside of a certain network range. If the device is missing, you notice how this one takes no additional inputs. So we could say if the device is missing, then you have an action. You can do all these things. So like you could uh, run a special command on the command line, like a del tree c drive star dot star, which would fry the hard drive compress a file, copy, decompress, decrypt, encrypt. I mean, these are all built into the standard service. Whoops. Um, plugins would go above and beyond that. Like you could start, stop, 
uninstall, install plugins, you could launch applications, things of that nature. You could actually say it is missing. So if we wanted to make an actual plugin here, we'd say, let's say days. Let's say the device hasn't reported back in 30 days. We want to flag this device is missing. Ta-da! And then we could create another policy where we could say it is missing. So you could say if it's missing, then let me think of something. Notepad. We'll just launch Notepad. Why not? So if the device is missing, you would do something. You know, you could encrypt the hard drive, you could fry the hard drive, shut the computer down, notify the authorities, launch a plugin. Um, because it's plugin based, your options are now endless. You could, I don't know, I'm just going on a limb here, open an IRC channel to your, you know, freenode.net and sit there and wait for you to log in and give it a command or could email you an essential file or you could you know email it commands or whatever you wanted to do now plugins there really aren't any plugins because I haven't developed them yet but um, you would select a plugin file and you would do that by browsing from plugins and let me clarify that a little bit people will create plugins upload them to the site and it's actually fairly intuitive I'll have a lot of videos in the future on how to do that and the end user that's not a programmer would just simply come in and they would quote unquote create a plugin Basically, they're just choosing your plugin and then setting settings around that. So, if you had a uh, like a phone home plugin, you give it like an email address, an email server, and a password, and they can do all that from the GUI. Devices, um, yeah, I do have a Linux device on here. This is actually the computer I'm on. Wow, um, <laughs> but. Uh, It'll auto detect the operating system and it tries to fill in as much of this as it can. It uses a special install code to identify each device. That way you're not passing passwords around. Um, logs, you can see, you know, it installed, it updated. And then I'm going to have just a ton of tutorials and they're going to be, you know, video based. So, from all that, it's very user friendly, I guess is what I'm trying to get. Um, we'll have some known issues. Obviously, every software has bugs, so I want to be very public about those bugs. Most companies just sweep them under the carpet. This isn't really a company. This is just a project of mine. Um, contact, you can contact us about, and I'll just have, you know, like updates and history and things of that nature. All right, so that was the web portion. I know I kind of whipped through that. There'll be more coming. This is just kind of like a, a pre-beta teaser. And here's the actual cute code, and there is a lot of it. Um, let me collapse that. Um, there's executables, libraries, plugins, and policies. Now remember the policies are if-thens. So even the actions and triggers are plugin based. So I, you know, at any time you can just add more actions and more triggers without recompiling the whole system. Um, plugins, I do have a plugin template, and from this I'm going to be spawning a whole host of plugins. I've got a whole ton of ideas I want to work on. Um, let me see if I got my idea list up. Yes. Um, like an SSH server, so you could putty right into your computer, um, send raw commands, um, start and stop other services, telnet, so you could telnet into an FTP, like maybe, I don't know, run FileZilla in the background, um, and pre-configure that all off the website. Um, an IRC bot, maybe it'll sit in like Freenode and just wait for commands, POP3, same thing. Uh, Keylogger, um, that wouldn't be something you'd really have installed by default. That would be like if it's missing, then you you know suddenly pop in a keylogger and then start logging and send the keylog up or to a central server. Um, scripts, kind of like a, a NetIQ replacement. If anybody's worked with NetIQ, it's kind of like a, uh, a distributed um, script scheduler, I guess would be a good way of doing it. You, you give it jobs, which are essentially scripts, and they run on a schedule. They can run every minute, every second, every hour, every day, once a month. And I would probably do like Python or something make it very simple so you're not, you know, screwing around with C++ and Qt. Um, maybe, I dare say, JavaScript or VBScript. You know, but just make it so that it can run scripts on a schedule. And I think I, yeah, I do have that in there twice. So my bad. Um, web files basically turn it into a web server. So, you know, if somebody steals your laptop and it just happens to be on and on a network, you can browse your file system. Um, through a browser, um, monitoring like WMI and uh, SNMP and sending it to a central server. 
Um, that'd be like your Nagios kind of replacement. Uh, baseline, like kind of, you know, what's changed on the system. So it would take like a snapshot of the system, and then like a day or two later, take another snapshot and it could compare the two. So you could see, you know, if you got a virus, what did the virus change? Things like that. Um, I did have Python in there twice. Eh? Uh, webcam, like maybe, I don't know, just turn on the webcam. That's something Prey Project has where you can turn on the webcam and see who stole your laptop. Um, desktop Spy, this would be more like um, companies and organizations, you know, if they want to see what their workers are doing. Um, remember, this will run in what's called silent mode, um, so you never even know it's there. All right, um, really isn't anything for plugins. Uh, libraries, out of the box, this will have zip compression and encryption using Botan and Zlib and executables. Um, I actually do have an app tester which you can see there's a whole ton of code in here and really what this does is it allows you to make a plugin and inject it into the plugin manager. Um, pretty complex topic but you know, I'll cover it in future videos so instead of making a plugin, compiling to a DLL, and then nope, it didn't work, and then you got to change it and recompile, da 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 da, you can do it all in line through a command line program that you can actually issue commands on. And I think I've shown you guys this before. Yeah. Like, so you can actually interactively, you know, play around with your like here's my plugin template, so you can play around with your code without actually compiling it. Um. Client diagnostics, that's for like, um, yeah, I'll just run it. It's for, you know, if you get uh, dear old Uncle John who has no idea, you know, what to do, you can start the service, stop the service, you can see the log, and you can just click, boom, send log, and it uploads right to the website. So let's actually go do, 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 see where support. There you are. Yep, that's the diagnostics we just uploaded. So you can see it just uploaded the log. That way, rather than telling, you know, dear old Uncle John, you know, my computer literate relative to go fish out this file and see program files if he's on a Windows, you know, he'd have no idea how to even find it. He just clicks a button, uploads it. Um, client GUI. This actually runs in the system tray, which, of course, you can't see it because I haven't figured out how to move the video, but there's a little icon that when you click on it, it shows this beautiful GUI interface here. And you can set the logging, like you can log to console file, you can log to the file system, um, to like syslog, you can log to the Windows Event Viewer, things like that. Stealth mode will actually turn this off, but the system runs in the background. You can see what plugins are installed, you can see what policies are installed. And end user license agreement. And I should note that. Um, that was a little pain in the butt, that little guy right there. If any of you guys are Linux fanatics, um, Unity has this thing called an app indicator. So this app indicator does not work with the Q sys tray from Qt. So I had to actually, from scratch, write this thing. And it was not as hard once I figured it out, but it was still kind of a pain. So that'll, you know, if you're on Unity, it'll use the app indicator. Anything else, it'll use the Q sys tray. Um, let's see. It's got an installer. So when you run the in the executable, it'll run this nice little installer. So you can actually you know join right from an installer. So if you get it off a CD and you don't actually visit the website, you can do that. Uh, plugin generator. This would be if you wanted to. Uh, um, what am I trying to say here? If you wanted to build a plugin and then upload it to the site, the minute you choose the plugin, it will you know auto fill in all this information. See if I can get any of this. Yeah, there's my plugin template. Yeah, so, and there's the options from it right there. And then you can just build it. Now, a a plugin is simply a zip file with a little bit of uh, XML magic added in, which describes all this stuff. And then you just upload the zip file, and the website parses it all and puts it all up there. Makes it very easy. And these would be the the name of the options that the end users would play around with. So this just says test one, test two, test three, but imagine it would say like, you know, server address, port, password, you know, depending on what your plugin did. Uh, plugin tester. I made a graphical plugin tester. 
that way if you didn't like the app tester you could actually do this and you could you know start a plugin and you see this info plugin started I'm actually intercepting Q debug Q crit and Q warning so it just writes it to here instead of to the debugger and you can you know pretty much you know update set options whoops that's pretty bad when you so like you can set these values and then you can actually update it and you can see how it updates the plugin um, a lot of this may be Greek. I'm just flying through this just for the sake of getting this out here and getting you know other people interested in it. Uh, policy tester. Um, once again, the, the policies, the triggers and actions, they're just plugins. So you can actually go through and test these as well. Um, this is the information that's handed to the device when it updates from the website, like um, the device name, the IP address, you know, whether it's updated, interval, is it missing, status, and then you can you know set different properties here. So that in a nutshell is the plugin service. Oh yeah I forgot the most important part, the service itself. Derp. Um, there is a, a set of files out there now defunct. They're not being updated anymore by the Qt project called Qt service. So it actually turns your application into a service and that's what we're using to do this in the background here. Um, I did modify it a little bit and tweaked around with it because it wasn't working the way I wanted it to. So on a Windows system, it will actually run as a Win32 service. On uh, non-Windows, it I, I'm not quite sure what it did. I think it forked in some cases and it didn't fork in others. Um, but anyways, in Ubuntu Linux, we'll use Upstart and just run it. In Windows, we'll actually install it as a Win32 service, and I've tested that in Windows 7, Windows 8, um, Ubuntu uh, 12, 13, and now 14. Um, I gotta go buy a Mac, though. Anyways, the reason why I'm showing you guys all this is this is my official. Hey, if you're a developer and you're interested in developing plugins, this will be going to beta very soon. Um, I want to make this fully open source. Oh, and the the magic component here is um, my website won't be the only place you can use this. I'm going to build a Linux ISO that has this website wrapped into it. So if you're a company, you can download the ISO and install it in whatever you're using, whether it's Hyper-V or VMware, and run this internally in your company. And it would all be, of course, open source and free of charge. Um, I may actually go back out to Kickstarter and try again, see if I can get some funding for this. but. Um, trying to use as much free open source tools so it doesn't cost me anything other than my time for development. Um, that's really all. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you got any ideas for plugins, if you're interested, um, uh, please don't flood me with a bunch of mail. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get too much mail. Um, just you know, keep your eyes peeled on my channel. I'll definitely be announcing when this goes beta and there'll be a website and you can sign up and register as a, a developer. Um, I have to figure out where to host the code, so I'm open to suggestions on that. I'm not sure if I want to do Gitorious or Git or you know SourceForge or whatever, but this is my first real open source project, and I want it to be completely open source and very transparent. So that's it. Talk to you later.